There's no talking. Just smile. Hey folks, Lester and Jamie here. We're having to be real careful this first minute because Facebook takes a snapshot and that's what they use for their thumbnail. That's what they're going to do right there. Your little, your little jolt in. I can't wait to see if I can figure <laughs> out when they're going to do the exact it. Exact second. That's what you're looking for. I'm going to like a ventriloquist. I'm just going to keep talking with a semi smile. I'm just going to smile and nod, make some facial expressions. I could do like that one real idea, the perfect smile, smile, put your finger between your teeth, do it, remove your finger, turn your head sideways. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dumbest thing. Oh my goodness, Jane. I don't understand how that could even be the thing. That's what I like. I don't get. I know, right? I know. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff today, but first, can we please start off talking about Kentucky? Is it Kentucky? It's It actually is a lot of places. Phoenix had flooding. Vegas had flooding. Utah had flooding. Kentucky, Tennessee, Southern Illinois, Missouri. Like, there is some, like, pouring out of water on many parts of our country. It makes me feel like quite the ass where I feel like every video that I make uh, for the last month, I feel like I started off the same way. Like, why God, why, why would you do this to us? And then if I don't watch the news and find out that there's people that are getting so much rain, so many inches in just a few hours that they're obviously, you know, the way water works, your ditches can't hold the capacity of water. The rivers are full and uh, you begin to get flooding where people are losing their lives yeah. across this great country of ours. And uh, I haven't watched the world news. I don't know exactly what's going on in the world. Um, I usually would spend Sunday mornings catching up with the news, but today we were at Longhorn Lester's early, uh, so I didn't catch the news. But uh, I did hear about the stuff in Kentucky and uh, I know there's several states, even Jamie's mom in Illinois sent her some pictures. I believe that was Friday afternoon mm -hmm. with water running down their streets. Now, she was blessed that no water got inside the home, but you could see homes on the street that had water inside of them. And from someone that's lived and, 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 and worked through flooding, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. Y'all, there's those people's lives could be changed forever, especially if they lost pets or if they've lost family members or loved ones or friends. Businesses can be shut down. That's people's livelihoods. So our hearts go out to those who are struggling and suffering. And Mother Nature is is can be very brutal. And I'm sorry to slow you down, but we didn't want to start the live off and, and not acknowledge the folks that are going through some hard times, either with the lack of rain or those that are having, you know, an abundance and too much of. You trying to find something to show? No, oh, I'm trying to find something to block. Oh, guys, it's um, very unbecoming of you as a human being. Uh, and we, we're not going to focus the entire live on on certain people, but what kind of a human being would come onto a, a, a friendly and a fun place where Jamie and I have nothing but good intentions and from the get go start spewing out the filth, the negativity, the well, anyway, just spamming. So like, like the spamming, if I can read the same comment about 20 times in less than 30 seconds, you're out. That's all. Yeah, so let's not, they call that, they do call that spamming, I believe. It's where the same person demands to be heard. So they say the same thing over and over and over and over. Um, that's like going to a place where there's people and you demand, you stand up in the room and you scream out your answers. It reminds me of like a press conference, like where that one reporter has to be heard. So they, they talk louder and louder and scream over everybody else, demanding that they have their question answered. And so I don't think that those reporters are, are seen. They don't, they're, they're not, 
smile upon when they walk into the room. So don't make that become who you are. And don't make us have to sit there the whole time and have to police what's going on over here in the side. We have a lot to talk about. But we before, do have a lot to talk about. Before we start, though, Jamie and I want to play a game. I attempted this game with Jake a couple of days ago. But uh, Jake, you can't play games with Jake because Jake uh, is just silly by nature. He has a very silly way about him. He's like a little <laughs> silly schoolgirl. And uh, we were gifted some dad jokes. It's a it's a mono versus mono, mono y mono dad joke battle off. And you know that he's the king of dad jokes here. So well, this is I've, probably I've, not fair. This is probably why he wants to play it with me because he knows that he can probably do. I don't know. So what I did though, uh, instead of the way Jake and I did it, I told Jamie to choose five questions. Go ahead and get the laughter out of yourself. So when you ask me or tell me the joke, you've already had a chance to laugh it over. You're going to see if you can make me break. But the problem is, the problem is, is that we can be sitting like, like just sitting. And Jamie, I can, there's nothing funny about my face right it's now. It's not your face. It's that I can look at you and I can read what you're thinking and I can start laughing at any point in time because I already know what like is on your mind about something. <laughs> and yeah, see, and then I, then the giggle Look how red out. I got already. I get to, I get, I guess I have blood, high blood pressure. You know, isn't that funny? The doctor has never prescribed me with high blood pressure, but I start laughing or giggling and my face can turn red as a beat. And I'm already feel like I'm red. I have been out working today though. So that's my excuse. And I came in and took a bath five minutes before I got I onto here. Say, so not, I'm hot. It's not sun. <laughs> a lot of people are like, Lester, wear sunscreen. Wear sunscreen. It's not sun on his face because he always has a hat on. Yeah. So it is actually like high blood he, pressure problem. It's his body temperature. He's pretty much a furnace, a walking furnace all the time, which works out great in well, the wintertime. Don't for forget, me. I have anxiety and I'm probably not making it better. And you're not making it better. <laughs> so what we have over here, I have five dad jokes that I'm going to read one at a time to Jamie and see how many times I can get her to crack. Now, guys, remember, you don't have to actually make a noise to laugh. Even you can, you can laugh with your eyes, Jamie. So no laughing. You make a face. And once I start my joke, I have to maintain the face. Your face cannot break. You cannot break rank as far as all of that. What do I get if I win? So hold on. I'm going to ban this person because that right there is annoying. I don't even know what you're saying, but that is the most annoying thing I've ever seen. So, okay. So now I've banned somebody too. All right. One to one. I don't know what they're even saying there. Did I not you block did. it? You did. It, it just it, still shows it, yeah. but now you all can't see it. Yeah. So yeah, stop doing that weird stuff. Y'all don't be weird. Listen, there's a whole lot of internet pages where you can go be as weird as you want to be. You can go get on some serious fights with people. You can fight back and forth, but we don't have that kind of page. But um, anyway, so are you ready to do this, Jamie? I'm ready. All right. So I have five cards you want to go first or do you want me to oh no i want you to go first well you know what instead of me going all five let's go one at a time okay. and let's keep score on the bottom i'm going to go ahead and put a scoreboard on the bottom you spelled my name wrong i can't type no. all right so here's what we're, we're going to do <laughs> all right so right now lester and jamie they're zero to zero so if you crack you get a point. You don't want to get a point in this game. You do not okay, want to so get a point. Okay, so you want to keep your score low. That's you want to keep your here. score low. Okay, how many times have you cracked? Okay, here we go. Y'all ready? I shall go first. Or did you want to go first? Okay. So, uh, remember, I can't laugh either, okay? I can't laugh either. And, and, and I'm looking at the camera, but I'm looking at you in the face, right? Yes. Okay, you That's ready? That's the rule, right? Okay, here we go. I wore, I, I got this joke because of Jamie before the line was asking me, does she look okay? So here goes my first joke. What kind of sandals do frogs wear? Open toed. Okay. Jamie did not break. So Jamie did not have to lose a point. No tally marks from the teacher today, friends. Darn. Okay. So that was good. You started off real strong. All that right. wasn't funny at all to you. Okay. So here's the thing. 
it's not as challenging because I'm not looking in the eye. If I was looking you in the eye at that part, I would have laughed. Well, look me in the eye next time, please. I'm looking you in the eye. But I'm like, it's the different camera. in the eye in here. No, I'm looking at right into your eyes. Go ahead. What you got? Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. What I'm going to do is just think about something else. Go ahead. What do you call a wingless fly? What do you call a wingless fly? A walk. A walk. Now, wait, you just laugh at your own I joke. Know. <laughs> we funny. said you can't do that. But it's a funny joke. Well, you got a point. No. You got a point, Jamie. <laughs> I'm not good at this. You have to be better than that. So I'm winning right now. Okay, do it again. Oh, where's that? Did I not enter? Okay. But you didn't put it up there. So. Ah, y'all are typing too fast. So Lester zero, Jamie has one. Remember, you don't want to get points here. Jamie laughed at her own joke. You should have already had time to go over all of these. And uh, I saw your face. Okay. I saw your face. <laughs> here we go. <clears throat> Number okay. two. Tell me whenever you're ready. You're giggling. Mm -hmm. You're using your soda to cover your face. You're cheating. <laughs> no, no, I'm. Y'all right. see it, right? No. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I have to make you laugh at least. So it's mm -hmm. null and void. Wait, I got a point for that already for, for doing exactly what you just. But did. I might can make you laugh still. Ready? This shout out goes out to the mathematician who invented the number zero. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> you didn't laugh at that, Jamie. Listen, I clear, I no. Well, that's not good. Lester won, Jamie won. Lester won, Jamie won. Darn it. I'm running out of cards. I only got three more cards. All right, you ready? Uh, that was funny. Okay. So did you hear about the circus fire? It was intense. You don't get it? No, I get it. It was intense because there's tents. Like Chorizo was like a little tents of Chelsea. Yeah. Not Fine. funny to me. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Next no up. point. Boy, we're running low on cards here. Are you ready? I know you'll love this one. Mm, okay. Why do ducks have tail feathers? To cover their butt quacks. Yes. Yes. I did not laugh and Jamie did. Okay, that one's cute. That's cute. However, you got more points than I got. That means you're losing. Okay. Jamie has three cards left. I only have two. Uh-oh. Ready? I am. Why was the pony having difficulty singing? Why was the pony having difficulty singing? It was a little horse. It was a little horse. <laughs> this isn't fair. Did you read all of these cards? No, I've not read any of those cards. And you know what I, else is not I fair? totally get it. It was because, horse. Like it, <sighs> Because you have been reading dad joke books for months now. Practicing for all of your, you know, Jake and Bennett Jamie, side by side. Ventures. You don't know this, but I have waited my entire life for things like this. This is this is not just the last few months. I've been living, waiting my life to have my opportunity to get in front of a platform and perform. <sighs> and this is my performance of a lifetime. Here we go. <laughs> you ready? All right. OK, I think that you'll like this one. And I will say that I picked out a lot of my jokes because I think that they apply to you. Okay. You forgot which one, didn't you? No, I'm just, I'm going to reword it a little bit to make it apply more to what you do. Uh, living. Now we're rewrite, rewriting jokes here too. Why did Jamie hire this particular doctor to work in the ER? Because he has lots of patience. That's cute. That's cute. 
Jamie hires doctors just, for a what, living. Can we just say that I'm just lost? Y'all want to just say that Jamie's lost? I do want to hear her last couple of jokes, and I do want to play my last one, but Jamie has officially lost. Jamie does hire and fire doctors. Y'all know that, right? She manages doctors. So I thought that would be one that would kind of apply to you. I'm not pick out the but an one. ER doctor has to be patient. And so you hired him because he has lots of patience. Never mind. Uh, I can't tell if people are laughing or if we're boring everyone to death. So, oh, someone over here has listened to their whole list of their own dad jokes. All right, we're almost done with the dad joke one. Go ahead, Jamie. What you got? So how do you stop a bull from charging? How do you stop a bull from charging? You unplug it. You're laughing at that? Well, think about it. Here's my last one. This is kind of dumb, but it applies to both of us because of our early morning routine. I finally had to quit my job at the coffee shop. I got tired of the same old grind. You just giggled a little. I saw you have to pull it back together. <laughs> I did pull it back together. I had to pull that one back together. That was the last of mine. Let's hear the last of yours and let's move on with our life. So two pickles fell out of a jar. Two pickles fell out of a jar. They just decided to deal with it. They just decided to deal with it. So you sit there with an entire stack. Let me show y'all what she had to look through. She had all of these cards to look through <laughs> and she only had to pick out five. But I had like a thousand no. cards in Here's the cards that I minute. had to pick through in less than and a I minute. picked out my five. We had the same amount of time to pick out our jokes. It was a really neat gift that was sent to us by Teresa Eulenhake. She's a friend of the page and she's been very good to us in the animals. So thank you, Teresa. Uh, sorry that... Uh, the jokes with Jake was such a letdown. I could not get Jake to be serious for anything. And then, like you said, I started laughing also. So me and Jake made a total, it was a disaster. But uh, it's, a, it's a fun game, and I know we'll get a lot of fun out of this. Oh, you're going to hear more about these on the side-by-side -side with Bennett, I'm sure. Maybe not with Jake, because, you know, Lester takes 30 minutes to get a Jake video about that because neither one of them can control their giggling. I've actually talked about that. It's hard to make a video with Jake because, you know, when I go out in the mornings, I'm always on a schedule. I used to not, but now we have Longhorn Lusters and we have a morning routine at both properties. I need to get up and get going and get things done. And I catch Jake or Ben and I can get a shot with Jake real fast. No. I'm sorry. I can get a moment with Ben real quick. He's such a poker face. <laughs> yeah, you get Jake out there and you're going to be stuck for 30 minutes to an hour trying to get him to cooperate. But The funniest parts, so are for me whenever I am like walking out to do something really quick and I have to like hurry up and skirt by and both of you forget your lines because I hear you're like, no, Jake, that was mine. And like they're your brains are the same. I'm afraid. I'm pretty sure. So you're saying Jake has a very bleak future. <laughs> Jake has a very bleak future. Well, at least in the dead. Let's world. hope he can keep. <laughs> let's hope he keeps his looks up because if this, if it goes down to his sense of humor, he's he's had it, huh? <laughs> um, that was a lot of fun. Thank you for that. Um, seems like a lot of the chatter over on the side here of the page is Lester had this idea. Lester had this vision. Lester was trying to make someone's dream come true. And it ended up to where I am, I think, the laughing stock of most of the internet right now. Oh, no, you're the villain, too. Like, I'm also the villain. I'm not only, I'm the villain, and I'm the laughing stock of the internet. Because I had what I thought was a brilliant idea. I ran it by Jamie a couple of days ago. I ran it by Ellie. Ellie was actually on board. Ellie loves the idea. Jamie, though, being the stickler for rules that Jamie is, just trying to squash my dream. I'm not trying to squash your dream. What I said was, okay, so there's some really neat things about it. Maybe and... we should, for anyone who hasn't had a chance to see the okay. video this morning, maybe we could do a real quick synopsis of what my vision was. I want to start off by saying that we're very blessed 
to receive emails on a daily basis, hundreds of emails. And uh, many of those emails are people who are looking for advice or ways to do what we do as far as taking care of animals, offering the rescue, the forever homing, a sanctuary. Uh, some questions are very technical as far as the nonprofit goes, but most of them are just how does someone get started? How can someone get started? And oh, sure, bless you, me. love, bless you. And so I'm, I'm, I'm always, I always answer those emails. I can't answer every email, but I always take time to answer those. But knowing that we, uh, you and I have both been invited to be guest speakers at an upcoming conference where they're going to take up and coming beginners in the social media market and try to we're going to use what we've learned to help them get a foothold a window of opportunity into content creation, content creation in social media uh, because both of us and, and many of us have just had that we were given that window of opportunity and we've we've made it we've made it i will i will say that we've made it and we're blessed for that. We're blessed to have made the acquaintance of so many people. And so I thought to myself that it would be really neat if we could not only present at the conference and give the tidbits of information that has worked for us, but also maybe give somebody even an extra boost, a window of opportunity and let them actually come and live here temporarily not nothing long term but live and work here at the sanctuary um the fun part about us is that we would be sort of the mentors we'd be the ones to teach and show the ropes and at some point turn the reins over and then we would just kind of sit back from a supervisor position watch video of course we would video because we video everything and then make it sort of a fun challenge to see who could be the ultimate I'm a survivor, survivor, uh, not animals this time, but who could survive working at I'm a survivor? Because we all know that Lester's pretty tough. I run a tight ship uh, when it comes to what goes on out around the barn. I can't say that I'm Gordon Ramsay, scream, holler, curse, and yell. I do that for fun with Jake sometimes. But uh, but I know that there are thousands of people that would love to have an opportunity. They just need a window to showcase what they could do if they ever had a chance. And I think to myself how blessed we are because we were given we, we found our 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 open door and we, we walked through it and look how all of our lives have changed. And so. I just thought that would be a way that we could kind of get a lot of things done around here because if there's always work to be done here and there's never enough time to do it, it would give people a chance to see what farm life is really about. It would give us a chance to introduce people to our audience and then our audience would be able to sit there and very easily pick and choose who you think is a good fit for this farm temporarily but their own farm in the future. And that would give them, in fact, their window of opportunity. I also talked about how there's, a, there's only really two requirements. Number one, first and foremost, you have to be able to perform the task that farm life requires, which is not easy. Farm life is not easy, guys, it's not. There's a lot of physical labor involved in running a successful farm. Number two, well, I guess along with that first one, you have to have a love of the animals because anyone who doesn't love animals, it's going to show through in a heartbeat. There's no way you can fool an animal and you're not going to fool the followers of this page into making them think that you're this great animal person when in fact you're not, you're fake. People will see that in a heartbeat. So someone who tries to come out here and fake it for however much time they're gifted to be here would make a fool of themselves they would dig their own grave because people would see right through them 
Number two, they would have to be able to content create. They would have to be able to already have a knowledge of how to make a video because they would, in fact, I'm a survivor takes credit and takes a lot of pride in how many videos we create and produce for the world for free. And so no one's going to charge anyone to watch this content. It's just the same thing that you would watch when you go to your nighttime TV with some of your game shows, except in this case, it would be put on by us local people, nothing with networks, nothing fancy, just giving a couple of people a chance to see how they would do on a real farm, videoing all that we can, critiquing, learning from them, giving them a chance to work with real animals that you already know and love and seeing how they would do. Now, there's so many small details that have to be worked out. And obviously we've talked about that a lot since we've been reading the comments this morning about all the things I did not think about. Oh, I thought about them. It was just a dream. And I hate to see the dream be squashed before you ever give it a chance because it may be my vision and my brainchild, but there's a lot of people who love the idea of that, love the idea of it. Yes, they agree that we're asking for a lot of work, a lot more than what we have ever, ever endeavored and taken on before. But there, there, so, so can I talk about some of my pros and please, some of my cons? Please, and, I think this would be a great time to talk about it. And we're not ignoring anything right now. I want to um, ignore that, block that. That person is not even a real human being. Okay, so I'm gonna block the that bot. One, that, yeah, that. Okay, so I have like giant, fears, anxiety, and all of the things that people have said about liability and about time and anxiety and stress and all those things. Yes. But I've also like gone down, you know, the path of, of thinking maybe on some of this. Um, there are some of the details that Lester put out about 90 days. I don't know anyone that can give up 90 days of their life. I, neither one of us could, could give up two days you're let right. alone 90. i will go ahead and say that that was foolish of me to think that um because you're right who can leave their family who can leave their job who can leave their home who can leave anything for 90 days even the game shows are between two weeks and at the most i think i've seen 30 days yeah so possibly that might could be something that could be more feasible because i still think you could learn a lot about people in two weeks of uh, constant 24 7 you can learn a lot about people in about 24 hours. You could, you could. And, and for anyone that said stranger danger, I'm here with you. And I started to tell Lester, I'm like, oh no, there'll be background checks and physical that have to be performed fit tests. And, you know, we would need to see not just a 30 second video of them. We would need to see their life and what they do today and really judge some of that as well. And then, you know, uh, let's let's just like liability alone is huge. And there would have to be all kinds of waivers, additional insurance. And and again, this is Lester's like vision and just talking about it. Sometimes we have a great deal of fun talking through these things, like just what if scenarios. He's always done that with the boys. So to think about this as to what if, like there are some really neat pieces of it too. I don't want to sit here and like, poo poo all of Lester's ideas because I would be heartbroken if it was mine and he just came back to me and was like no that's dumb that's stupid we're not, we're not doing it and we didn't just talk it through what a neat opportunity for someone who is is like just I don't know fresh out of college or has been a ranch hand for a long time or has has found themselves just not fitting in in their current world and and is just looking for opportunities the world of social media goes way beyond what we have just with I'm a survivor, suits to boots and Longhorn Lester's. There are people, regular people everywhere who are using TikTok or shorts or reels or I don't know, all kinds of places to talk about who they are. And so people are getting more and more comfortable with the camera already, which gives me hope that there are people who would want to take that next step but who also have a love of animals. So there's, there's not like a full blown, you know, like no in this, but I think there are parts of Lester's dream that we could actually, actually do. Maybe it's somebody who is just graduating from college and or high school and going into college and they're adults or, 
and are looking for scholarship money. I don't know. There's there's things here that I think could could benefit. We just haven't explored all of them yet, but I do think that there are there are some really neat pieces of his idea that could work that don't involve giving up a hundred percent of our privacy and and being detrimental to any one or any animal. So you know it's um it is if you watch any TV ever you see things like Survivor and The Amazing Race, even American Idol, America's Got Talent talent. There are a lot of people who alone, naked and afraid. Now we wouldn't be doing anything naked here. Um, no, I, but you know what, even I got a chance to go spend the week with Bear Grylls. And so I know that there were some papers that had to be signed. I'm sh I know there was always a medical team on standby. And I know that there was disclosures, things that I had to sign that I could not talk about. And so we know that there's some paperwork to be done. But I also know that through all of these hundreds of reality TV shows, it's not unheard of. Now, maybe having a network come in and do it. But I said in my video that if you ever let a network in charge, then you have to follow a script. And the one thing that we will never do here is follow scripts. We won't follow scripts. And that what makes it so raw and so perfect is the fact that it would be real. And so not only would they be making their own videos, which you would evaluate, but we'd be making our behind the scene videos of what we see from our end and what we're liking, what we're not liking. The disclosures would have to be where they cannot produce content on their own using their own platforms. Whatever is videoed here is for I'm a survivor to you know purposes only. And so that's that's all lawyer mumbo jumbo. I get it. It would take some work on the back end. But I still think it would be something that even though people might not like the idea of, I think that there's not many people who would be able to not watch this couple or that couple or that couple or that team or that pair go through a week of the struggles of maintaining a successful sanctuary. I think it would be eye opening. Like the concept around that is very eye opening to, I think, people because there's a lot that we do that even when Xander and Kendra are here, my mom is here who don't live on farms and don't live this life that for us is very routine. And we just walk out and do, and they, it, it, they're in shock because of how much has to be done before you can even go grab lunch somewhere. And I think that there are a lot of people in this world who haven't lived a life like this before that would be intrigued by that and and shocked by that and then the for everyone that that watches that part of it it's a big understanding because i think we take some of our day-to-day -day stuff for granted like go check the waters one more time before you leave check on the animals make sure all the gates are open um make sure that nothing got into the feed room and that nothing was left open there i mean there's a lot of like really for us is very quick but it doesn't even require extra thought but if you put that on somebody new in a new environment, how interesting to see it from a different perspective um, from that. And and I know that everybody is is saying, what about your animals? You would never forgive yourself if something happened to the animals. I, I don't remember if well, you said this. Well, it's not like we would not be here. No, that's the thing is like no, no one's going to be left alone. Like no one's going to be left alone. And, you know, Lester and I have had some experience with visitors coming to the farm and some folks helping out in the very beginning. Um, I know that y'all know the donkey story and, and that, that unfortunate event, which scared us, terrified us and actually changed rules forever. But, um, I, I think that we can potentially talk about some of those. So those other things too. So I don't know. There's, well, there's a lot. You I, know? I just think that there's probably a lot of folks that have amazing passion for animals, which is, which you, you can never go wrong by allowing someone's passion for anything in life. If they have a zest for something in life, then by all means, they should have a, a, a way to, to show and express that. And then you would also be not only giving that person a chance to in, involve and interact in any way no, and engage with real animals who you already know and love, 
but we would be able to see a lot about these per people as well. They might could teach us things about our farm, show us things that might would make life easier. I mean, granted, whenever Courtney and Ashley come to do things, we learn from them all the time. Always. And we have run across some really amazing people here and over at Longhorn Lester's. And it was just an idea. It was an idea that popped into my head, something that I'd started thinking about for a while. And I just told Jamie I was going to mention it in a video. And how shocked was I to wake up this morning with already 2,000 comments? And it was about half and half. Half were saying what an idiot I was, which is nothing new. And the other half were saying how brilliant and people are already trying to send us their resumes. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, and I and I made this clear. I said, hey, we'll stop. Slow down. We're not looking for resumes. We're not doing anything yet. But Jamie's right. Before we would ever let anyone come and stay here for any period of time, there would have to be uh, some extensive background work. We're not letting child molesters and and, you know, criminals and people with criminal records come and, and stay here with us, with our family around the animals and whatnot. And there would be obviously all kinds of paperwork and there would have to be some things, some physicals. You'd have to pass some physicals and the same stuff that I had to do with the Bear Grylls people. It would be very similar, I'm sure, but it could be done. It could and be. and I and I know and despite the fact of what a lot of folks are saying, this would be entertaining. And if it's if you like entertainment, I can't imagine some of the fun. Clips that could be recorded from people trying to work with our animals. Our goats will be back by the fall. And of course they'll be here in the spring. And I just can't imagine some of the people trying to work with the pig Trudies and the Ringos and yeah. some of our horses and cows and our big galoot. Well, even like and, trying to fill up some of the waters while you're, you know, you just get it done and, and, and then all of a sudden something walks through it and it's disgusting again, all of a sudden, I mean, the geese, alone like there's there's so many things here that we're very accustomed to and our animals are very accustomed to us but i think that it would be an opportunity for someone who maybe had never never otherwise would have had that chance it and, would be a window and yeah. that's all we talked about was offering someone a window because it would be a life-changing event for that person if they were selected and I will say this also, you know, the hard part is not the animals here. The mm -hmm. hard part is not the work that you and I would have to do in overseeing all of this or the paperwork or meeting with some attorneys. The hard part would be the people, the couples or the teams that would be here because they would have to learn something they've never learned before. How to take criticism, how yeah. to be torn to shreds on the Internet, how to have total strangers calling you out from your physical features to your lack of this or your inabilities to do this or just being a plain idiot. And they have to roll with that because all of that would be something that they would be opening them, themselves up to. And I can tell you right now, the internet has a whole lot more evil people who stalk and browse these pages than they do have kind, loving folks. But uh, it would be, and it would give people, maybe even more than one team, a window a window to take with them to possibly gain a few following on their own pages and wherever they end up back in whatever state or country they come from, guess what they have? They have their window. And so what I know about windows is that, you know, I just take the family members from right here at, at I'm a survivor. So you take your Jake and your Brienne, sister Kim, my dad, Ellie, all of went who are making a living off of social media because they had a window. They were given a window and they all have their different perspectives and they all have their different style, their different video techniques, but all they needed was a window. And how many people out here know you have the, you have the skills, you have the talent, you have the passion, you have the love, you have the camera skills. You're not scared to be in front of the camera. You're not scared to express yourself and show the world who you are, but all you never have been given is a window but they have to be humble enough to take our criticism as well which is, is sometimes a very challenging feat for someone who is wanting to you know step into this world 
And, you know, I think about like internships, these happen, you know, internships happen all everywhere in the world, summer internships and things like that. And I think about, I think about the possibility of, of, you know, it could be even people who are similar to us where like they are, their kids are, are gone now and they have this opportunity, you know, every, like they don't have so much in their life, but this would be enjoyment for them. Um, I don't know. There's just a lot of, of people who, of style of people. Uh, but I, I think that just like when you watch American Idol and they do all of the stunts and all, not the, not stunts, the stunts, but the but activities, like, the games, the challenges. Well, Survivor, yeah. But like on American Idol in the beginning when mm. they're doing the, what do you call it? The auditions. The, the auditions. auditions. Yeah. So if we got audition or, you know, submission videos from folks, it would be so neat to hear the stories of the people who and the why behind them want why they want to do it. And that would be stuff that you would help us decide yes. because the same way we were we were the ones receiving these submissions, we would take those submissions and show you. And so you would also be entertained by seeing some of the submissions. And you would also have a, a voice in saying, who should we invite? Who are the ones that we actually invite for their week? or for their two weeks or whatever we decide to do. I think it, it could be awesome. I, I love the thought of thinking about the possibilities. I think it's, so and, it goes right back to what we talked about on Time Out Tuesday with opening your mind to think about just differences and, and, and opening your mind to just explore options allows you to, you know, to, to truly think through it before you get the instant no, because I will be the first to tell you that I looked at Lester and was like, no, no, I don't like, like, I like people at certain levels, but, but people in my business, meaning like right here to where if I need to run outside in my pajamas to go close a gate or chase an animal back in, or I don't know, whatever happens in the middle of the night, I don't want to think that someone else is here watching that or or using that as as something. So there would have to be so many barriers and things that are put into it. And it's it's a thought, guys. It's a thought of like maybe, maybe and maybe parts of it, maybe not. I don't know all those things. I, I mean, it's just fun to think about like what if what if we were in the shoes of watching a creator that said that and we would both like say if we didn't have all this to take care of, this wasn't our life. Let's just say we were regular people living in, in a suburb somewhere or maybe even outside of town. And, we, all and we I had, can talk to my boss and get me two weeks off. Yeah. I need two weeks, boss, and I'll be back. I need two weeks. Yeah, and I would do the same thing. Like, how, like, for us, that would be, what an opportunity. What How fun would that be? I mean, we've even, we watch Survivor habitually. And there are so many of the pieces of Survivor that we would love to do. Now the 28 hour flight to go to Tahiti or wherever the heck they are, not so much. No, we would be doing but, it right here in yeah. Palm Grove. <laughs> but we but if life was different, I I would be intrigued by it. I can't lie about that. I I'm actually kind of laughing at some of the comments. The, a lot of these comments remind me of when I brought Carl home. How you were all so sure that Carl is the end of us. You're no longer watching because what I've done was the most foolish thing ever in Carl. And now there would be anyone who was to say now that Carl was a mistake. <laughs> Many people wouldn't admit that. They were like, oh, yeah, I was always on board. But you're doing the same thing now. You're, you, you don't have, uh, you've lost that in you. And I hate that you've lost that piece of you, that dreams. And I'm not going to let you squash my dream. Now, this may never happen, but I promise you, I'm not, not going to carry through because you say, if you do it, I'm not watching anymore. <laughs> um, and then I guess I'll answer one last question that someone says, it's just, we're trying to make us famous. Guys, Jamie and I are as famous as we ever want to be. Jamie and I are as famous as we ever want to be. We don't make this for money. We, we do this love because this is the content. I love making videos. I get my passions from sharing the joys of animals. I get my therapy from creating animal videos, sharing with people that need them. 
And uh, you can go Google Lester Morrow and you can find all kinds of amazing things about me, more than you probably ever wanted to know. And so I, I'm as, about as famous as I ever want to be. This would not give me fame. This would help open the windows to other couples, other teams, other folks who are good, passionate people who love animals. And this would give them that window of opportunity. And I would love to see that. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about it. Um, no, I want to elaborate a little bit more on what you just said go, about the go go. No, about your passion and the why that you do this. Like there, there are many things in life that can fuel a person. Obviously, you all want all we too want enough to be able to live and to pay our bills and that piece of it. And I, I mean, I still work a full time job, and and that's what I gain. But what I gain from sharing on social media is is a community, is a way to, you know share my message of kindness mattering and hopefully be able to share my experiences and be able to help someone else. That's it. My impact, my impact and the, you know, the, the legacy of hopefully being viewed as a positive person and being able to overcome some challenging circumstances. And I think that this guy right here has very similar things and has overcome adversity and has admitted failures and has just been as real as real can be in this you know putting putting ourselves out there and tries to be entertaining and tries to make people laugh and smile and feel and i hope that that is what people take away from this as well that it is not about money or fame or or anything. In fact, I, I have to tell a story. In the very beginning, whenever we were talking about the sanctuary and the videos, and, and I think it was Texas video that really brought the sanctuary out. Because before it was Lester Marl, the guy who came home. Um, when was it Texas, the ball? Yes, yeah, so when Texas Red ball. ball. And we're sitting here and we're talking to Ellie, and Ellie sort of like, in his younger moments, said, yeah, but dad, People don't even know Les tomorrow. All they know is a bunch of animals. And you said, I don't care. I, I want the animals and the joy that they bring. I want to be able to pay that blessing forward because there's people in the world that don't get to see this side, that don't get to know what it's like to be able to engage and do all these things. And I'll never forget that moment of that, that made me realize that a lot of people want to put themselves out there, want their name to be the name in other people's mouths for many reasons and i think that neither one of us have ever been the i want people to know that i'm jamie walker or i'm lester morrow like that that's not who we are and if that's the message that anybody took away from from some of our videos or the content that we create i'm saddened by that because that is not the message that we put out well we um we have never been the kind of page that tells you how to do stuff. We've said that long ago, that there's a thousand or thousands, plural of pages of farmers that are very knowledgeable. Yeah. That'll tell you real fast what you're doing wrong and what you should be doing to do it right their way. And so we have always said, you know what? We're not going to be those people. We're going to go about this in a different approach. We're going to embrace the community that Facebook offers and that Facebook encourages. We're going to interact with our audience. We're not going to call you fans. We're going to call you family. We're going to run our ideas past you and we're going to take your input. We're going to listen to what you say. And by all means, we're going to try to listen to your collective voice. And on occasion, we have to make an executive decision based on what we see in the here and the now. But I would say that we've been very successful at doing that. And I, um, I'm, I, I feel fulfilled in what we, I feel like we've gone way, way past what we ever thought we would do with making a couple of viral videos, because that's all it was for us, a couple of viral videos. And look at us now with the millions that follow and this, the, the pages that are growing. And it's just a, it's paying a blessing forward. And that's, that's the way I see it. But uh, I'm also 
convinced that the products that would come off of the videos, the bloopers, the folks struggling to keep up, the folks who are learning on the go, folks trying to do things they thought they could do, but they realized they couldn't. We're not looking to make fun of anybody. No. We're not looking to make fun of anybody, but just like American Idol or just like other shows, sometimes people do find themselves biting off more than they can chew. And I'm certain that that would happen. And I believe that would be comical. And we would it would have to be something that everyone was okay with. And just knowing that that content becomes I'm a survivor content. And so it would just be, it would, like I said in my video, this would only complement, not compliment, but complement. It would be an, an addition to what we already do. No one's abandoning the animals. We're not turning them over to strangers like a lot of people want to think. But uh, we're but adding. I, you know what's so funny though? I, I took that comment a little bit harsh too because I, at the beginning I was a stranger to y'all. So was Jake. So ben, was Kim, Paul, Paul, Paul. Bree. So I, I took that a little bit like internal and thought to myself like, it's, it's not that we're gonna get a video and think, oh, these people say that they've done some ranch work and then oh yeah let them let them come over and we'll see how it rolls and in 90 days we'll we'll talk about it. no my gosh no mm -mm. no um there's a lot of vetting that would happen it would have to happen and again this isn't like this is going to happen this is a just talk and dream about it and then maybe one day who knows but there's no one on earth that would allow total strangers to come into their homes and take over and take care of their animals or their children for that matter like we live here this isn't like a place that just just exists that that has a huge network of supervisors and a and a full functioning business to to handle all those things no it's 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 us it's us and i don't know like i said like i i at some point in time was a stranger to all of you and that was a pretty vulnerable moment to get in front of the camera and then to slowly show that I knew absolutely nothing about farm life and to be able to put myself out there and, and allow people to critique every bit of me, not just what I was doing on the farm, what I was wearing, the way I, the way I talk, the way I think, the, you know, the way that, that I communicate with Lester and all, all the pieces of my life I put out there to be judged. So for, for those that are you know scared of strangers and things like that at one point in time we were all strangers i have that's funny but you think about how many people who i talked about recently who are just die hard pawpaw they need pawpaw in their life you would have never met pawpaw if i had not had to beg plead and arm wrestle him to make a video and then look at him now. Paul Paul's become a part of many of your lives. You would have never met Paul Paul had it not been for the fact that I'm a survivor, gave him a window. Paul Paul is now, that's my dad. He's living his best life. He has made a number of friends who he considers true friends that he needs in his life, who he gets up and he drinks coffee with every morning. Uh, you take Sister Kim, who was probably the, the most reluctant and the hardest to get on video. Mm -hmm. And now you have the folks who live and die with Sister Kim and Levi. And those are folks that you would have never met had it not been that they were given a window that they were scared to step into. And so I know, I know that there are other people out there who the world is at a disservice because you have not a chance to meet them. We've not had a chance to meet them. And I would love to do something like that. Maybe in the future, maybe not now, maybe it's too hot, it's too dry, it's too this, it's too that, it's too many uh, cynics, or, but it is what it is. It was a dream, it was an idea. It was talked about in my morning videos. Uh, it was talked about so much that I thought we'd go ahead and talk about it on our live today. Uh, not saying we're making any executive decisions to we're not looking for submissions right now, but uh, I think it was a great dream. It was fun to talk about. Yeah, it was in my so video. fun to talk about. I because I'll be honest, like 
we I tell you all the time that we talk about Survivor and like some of the games and how much we would love we would love to compete in some of the challenges that they do on regular Survivor. And obviously that's that's not farm life or anything like that, but like it's fun to think about putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And I think that that's just thought provoking and you know, it certainly gave us a whole hour to sit here and chat with y'all about the maybes and the 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 absolute no's and the <laughs> and the what ifs and that is good for your brain. Yeah. I guess I'll just end this part unless you're ready to end the live altogether. There's a whole lot of what about Ellie and Megan? What about Jake and his girlfriend? Guys, this is for serious, passionate people who want to make this their life and not uh, I'm a survivor of their life. They no, want to make, this they want to make type. farming and they want to have this kind of life. This is not a job. This is not a job. We would see real fast past those that just do it for a little bit of internet fame and those who just want to, you know, but uh, it's for, it's for hopefully to introduce the world to people with passions. And I hope that you see the passions, the work ethic that Jamie and I have. And uh, I'm not saying that we are the only ones with this kind of work ethic. You see no. a lot of farmers uh, who have made it on social media because of their work ethic mm -hmm. and their passion and their love for animals. And I know that those people are out there. And all we would be doing is introducing, hopefully, a few of those couples, yeah. a few of those teams, a few of those pairs to you guys. And so what they do once they leave here is up to them. But this is for passion. This is for passion and passionate folks who love animals, who have a very strong work ethic and who think they can handle the toils. Is it called the toils? The ins and outs, the daily grind, because I still know that I'm not trying to be mean, but yeah, you do see a 10, 15 minute video. But that video that you see is a very tiny snippet of what goes on around here. And now it's not just here. It's at two properties. And there's a whole lot that you don't see that. Uh, so and sometimes so I, I want to elaborate on that, too, because we're really good at having our phones with us and to break out a camera in those moments. But there are some times where the phone is charging and whatever. And there's, there's so much that I would love to, to bring to you about those extra times, but just to show, but some of that you would be so bored with, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, this scrubbing out of water troughs every other day. Well, that sounds like, I mean, Josh, why would you complain about that? About an hour and a half every other day right now. And it's busy and it takes a lot of time, but no one wants to watch that or know about it because you have your own work to do in your life. You want to see the funny, happy, crazy, get chased across the pasture stuff. You want to feel, you want to feel excitement. You want to feel that fear. You want to feel like you're right there in the camera and we get it. You don't want to feel scrubbing water troughs, but it is. Yeah. We can't bring you the real dirty because yeah. no one wants to see that be honest you come for entertainment and you want to be entertained and so we have to take that full uh 24 hour day and try to find some entertainment pieces out of there to keep you around um i will if we're done with that yeah. uh, we could answer a couple of questions real fast jamie and i both have a video this week carl our beloved carl over at longhorn lester's has something that we are a little bit concerned with so you'll be able to see that video. I believe Jamie introduced it to, in her tomorrow video. And then I talk more about it on a video upcoming this week. Somebody else just asked about it. So you must have it on a video that posted. They asked about it before you even said it. About Carl's mouth? Yeah. Then did I do a reel about it? I don't know what you did, but I told you that you made it. I'm like, I heard it. I heard you. I uh, heard you editing it. Sometimes I don't know what I do. I, that's <laughs> another thing too. So yeah, we have a, a small concern with Carl. All of the goats are doing well. We uh, are still getting daily messages from people There's asking. A lot of people are like, yeah, Lester was in a video. On, I'm so sorry, y'all. On lunch I, with Lester. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
there's we're still getting emails daily about folks asking us to help with their animals yes uh we also made a video jamie it's a jamie video that's going to be a hard one to watch i don't know what day she's going to play it but i will tell you the gist of it we were going to eat friday afternoon and we got in a line of traffic in a part of town we don't always go through and all of that traffic was loaded with trailers and so it was we literally found ourselves in one of those lines of people dropping off animals at an auction uh when we came out of dinner the auction was closed for the day and but uh, you could still drive by and circle the the lot and we did that and some video that we captured from is just heartbreaking and i i i it was hard for me to watch and so jamie i'm not sure how she's going to work that in to make it where it's viewer discretion advised or whatever let's just say that i lost it in a very public setting um so times are hard but uh, not just here times are hard everywhere yeah uh, our babies are fine. All of the goats are doing great. Annie still has not popped that baby out, but um, there are still moments. She still shows us moments that make us really like think, could this be it? Could this be it? And so um, yesterday, 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 uh, we had stepped out to do some chores and errands outside of here and came back and I had walked over to start doing waters. And I heard this noise that made me stop in my path and I'm freaking out and I'm fumbling for my phone, which is in the house on the charger. And I was like, forget it. I'm just going to go look. And I'm getting excited because I hear this noise that sounds like a, like a, a rumbling coo, like a noise that I had not heard before. And I'm thinking, oh my God, there's a baby alpaca. And I'm the first here and I don't have my camera and oh my God. And I walk around the corner and it's a chicken laying an egg and making the strangest echoing noise that I had ever, like it was a purr from a chicken. Well, we've, yeah, we've had moments. Uh, my moments were when I can't find Annie, when I walk out to That's water it. and yeah. I don't see her and I'm like, wait, Annie's not here. Annie's always here. So where's Annie? And I'm certain she's all having a baby. And uh, when I normally find her, nope, she's over there eating or she's wandered off to lay in the shade somewhere else. So Annie is fine. But we are promise you that will be one that we will jump right in front of everything else. The day that, that happens, you'll be the first to know. Mm -hmm. um, Cornholio is on the slow mend. He's uh, eating a lot more. Um, I did not get on a scale and weigh him before, which is usually like an Ellie thing, but Ellie wasn't here. Um, so I just sort of judge whenever I pick him up to bring him into the stall every night and by what he's eating at night when he's in the stall. And his color looks better to me and I think he's starting to fill out a little bit more. His demeanor is different as well. So it's in a positive way. Um, I don't think we're out of the woods totally yet or, or ready for anything. I know a lot of people were messaging and saying, Jamie, there's two turkeys that are available here or there's two turkeys, there's three turkeys. These people have turkeys, all these things. We're not ready for that yet. Um, he's got some more recovery and, and recruitment to do, but it's been about, I guess it's been about 10 days now and he is uh, starting to starting to do some some slow changes so we're really happy about that yeah okay well that's all I have Jamie we forgetting anything I just read something <laughs> somebody asked if they could send some spare shoes some spare shoes for corny well I got some bad news for you corny only likes men's used shoes that's not true. We've never taken any stiletto heels and dropped off in corny. So women, if you have any nice tall heels that you'd like to send, the ones that wrap up. Oh my God. I'm playing. I'm kidding, obviously. I made myself blush. Uh anyway, yeah, that's all. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for being so accepting and loving of us despite our many flaws. Go ahead. Thank you for allowing us into your homes and phones and giving us the greatest blessing, which is your time. We love you and we hope that you have a really blessed Sunday. And if you need rain, we hope you get it. And if you don't, um, we hope that you don't either. No, just send it down here to us. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take a little bit of it. <laughs> All right, y'all. We love you. Have a great evening.